Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. We are currently still doing the pertinence quest. The Counselor's Daughter. Yep, Counselor's Daughter. There we go, I got it. In the last episode, we found an escape passage from pertinence. And uh, we now need to speak to the luckless sister below stairs. So somehow we're going to have to sneak our way in under the radar here. Let's go to the parlor. We still have many invitations. Well, we have four, so hopefully that's enough. Uh, la la la, the portrait of the Empress swings open. Let's see if we can get inside here. There we go. Go below stairs. That was nice and easy, wasn't it? A concealed door blends in with the wallpaper here behind a bamboo screen, allowing servants to pass modestly in and out. The areas below stairs are part like the kitchen of a grand country house, and part like a factory floor. Cooks prepare food in enormous pots, servants appear with empty plates to be scraped off and cleaned, even while others carry steaming dishes upstairs. Further back are rows upon rows of hour looms, each tended by weavers, with their hair pinned tightly back. The heat of the cooking combines with the shudder of machinery in pandemonium. We can talk to the Philinguous Forewoman? She is an impressive sight, presiding over the din with a plum and a rolling pin. The Forewoman's waistcoat is dark and tightly buttoned. Beneath it, a corset strives gallantly against her ample figure. Her skirt is hitched up over a pair of soot-stained trousers and ankle boots. Strings of glass beads glitter at her throat, casting dazzling dazzles over her rich ochre skin as she bellows orders, sending workers scurrying from this loom to that. She turns to you. Her eyes are lined with pitch, grime or cosmetic affe affection. Go, let's ask her what she does. There seems to be bustle all around here. The Falinguous Foreman squints. I kept this damn place running, is what I do. Do you think the looms ravel their own time, or untangle knotted skeins, or order new consignments of hours to make sure them above don't go wanting for their precious, perfect day? You ever been in an hour carding accident? You ever seen a weaver's scalp torn off when their hair gets tangled in the warp? She takes a deep breath, and her already impressive bosom inflates to magnificent proportions. Them above may think we're all that, but this right here, this is perdurance, heart and soul. Okay, I mean that makes sense. Without the hour looms, perdurance is nothing more than a grand house. So we need to ask her about the luckless sister. Inquiring about illicit love affairs almost always goes well. You've only been slapped twice. Well, thrice. The fullalicious forewoman's expression turns hard in an instant. Them above's been talking, have they? Snide little gossips. She's the only one of them worth anything. She sounds remarkably affectionate as she warms to her subject. Perhaps it was the luckless sister who broke off the affair. No, it was me, the foreman admits miserably. Her face spasms for a moment. She draws out a handkerchief from her corset and coughs heartily into it. She shoves the handkerchief back into her pocket, but not before you notice a violet stain on the fabric. Aha. Uh -huh. The foreman has secrets. Uncover them. Okay, we can ask about the handkerchief. You noticed a violet stain, the precise colour of a certain aggressive strains of fungus found in the reach. Saw that, did you? I travelled before I was a foreman, and on my journeys I was exposed to certain spores. They colonised both my lungs and my thoughts, and are part of something old and vast. They awake impulses in me, the last and latest of which is to bring them home. I've denied them as long as I can. I must leave soon. He looks away. That's why I broke off the affair. Better to do it like that than sneak off into the night. 
I thought about asking her to leave with me. Us. But it would mean abandoning her sister. And what if the spores colonized her too? But maybe... Ah, no use worrying on maybes. Hmm, so the forewoman is the luckless sister? Well, is the... Well, first she's having the affair with even? The luckless sister is the luckless sister. Which is the one that we're not trying to escape with. Oh boy. This is going to get very complicated, isn't it? Okay, well, we can end our conversation here. Uh, from time to time, the Duchess of Dusk looks over the morning room to ensure her cycle is running smoothly. Let's move onwards. The Dowager Duchess rings a bell. Conversation halts with practice suddenness. Morning is over. Everyone arrays himself in the procession. We're moving from one place to another. Pregnancy is locked in the same eternal day. Okay, shall we speak to the clairvoyant doctoress? Her eyes are fixed on the candelabra before her, and the flames, steady in yellow, the burn on its candles. Now, I think we've come to the conclusion that the clairvoyant person is a snuffer, which I have encountered in Fallen London. They, they tend to be in the uh, prison, if I remember correctly. They're people who can swap their faces and change what they look like. Based what? People? Monsters? Are they monsters? I guess they're monsters. Why she smells of wax. Ah, there's nothing here. You have yet to disentangle the sisters. Okay, well, obviously we can't do that here. So, let's... Charm a chaperone? Or, no, let's, let's just charm a debutant. debutante again. I can't say that word, God damn it! You exchange wicked whispered observations. Uh, we are now moving to the next area. Passage opens, it is now evening. Okay, let's dance with the luckless sister. Hmm. So we, should, we could tell her about the person downstairs, or we should just talk to the preemptor and the heiress and see if there's any options. Have a look. Uh, oh, bugger. Ah, okay. Maybe we can expose the fallacious forwardman's secret. The heiress might be willing to persuade the luckless sister to leave with you if she believes her sister is in danger. Hmm. And if I talk to the luckless sister? Threaten to expose her affair with the foreman unless she convinces the presumptuous heiress to leave with you. Reconcile her with the foreman? You can uh, you can try, at least, and perhaps the peremptuous heiress will be easier to persuade when she knows her sister has a better reason to stay. I honestly don't know what the best course of action is here. Let's reconcile her with the foreman. You begin by hinting at the fallacious fallen's secret motives, casting their entire situation in the frame of a romantic tragedy. The luckless sister attempts to look uninterested, but her eyes betray her. You tell her the truth, that the foreman suffers from a singular fungal condition, that in order to tend to it, she will need to leave Perdurance. That she ended their relationship in order to protect the luckless sister. I don't need protecting, the sister snaps. Indeed, indeed. But she can't stay with her lover and her sister, can she? Oh, you are clever. You're a brute. Very well, if you promise to take my sister away from here, I will convince her to go with you. Perhaps after this, this business with the fungus, I will see her again. You'd better bring the form and the good news. Okay. Tie up an inconvenient loose end. Uh. Knows of your interest in the sisters and may endanger your escape. I. Really? Okay, the cleaner your escape, the better. The foreman is a complication, you'll need to get it on side. 
Frontier Silence. No. Kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, let's charm with the... Wait, can I do anything with the Presumptuous Heiress now? Anything new? Nope. Okay, let's... Uh, oh, let's keep with these guys. Activate the charm. Uh, evening. I'm pretty sure we still can't. Yep, just checking. Move onwards. I think we're going to have to go in again. Again, 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 again. One of the debutants would like a word. It appears you've made an impression. There is Fallen, 200 experience, and four Salon Stewed Gossip. Wonderful. Here we go again. The butler must be just going, where is he getting all of these invitations? You've just left. How would you possibly want to go back in again? Right. Let's go below stairs. And we'll talk to the Fallen. And here we go. Reconcile her with the luckless sister. You just want them to... <laughs> God damn it. You just want to see them happy. Well, and also to see the forewoman stay quiet about your escape with the heiress. You enlarge upon the luckless sister's willingness to renew her relationship with the forewoman and to elope together if the needs arises. She'd come with me, even appreciating my condition. Damn and blast. That girl's got three times the courage she does sense. And that's a fact. But I couldn't. You talk around from her wavering. After all, it's true love conquers all. Not true love conquers everything but some mushrooms. Okay. And now I think we need to talk to the clairvoyant lady. Clairvoyant doctoress. I think we have all the things we need. Here we go. Tell her. All is ready for your escape. The sisters are willing to part. An avenue of escape has been identified. Is she prepared to do her part? Yes, yes. Uh, give me a sign in the evening and we'll meet in the passages between evening and the parlour. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, should we do a chaperone this time? Yeah, sure, why not? We're going to be the life of the party this time around. Uh, servant's favour, wonderful. Move onwards. Make your escape. All is ready. You give the clairvoyant doctoress the faintest of nods, and she clicks her bag shut with a determined snap. The evening takes an interminable time to end. You endure waltz after dragging waltz. Debutantes wheel endlessly across the dance floor. Then it is over. The music and the dancing cease. The chaperones and the debutantes form their procession, ready to pass on the parlour at dawn, or perhaps dusk, and begin the day again. You catch the eye of the presumptuous heiress, who gives you a nervous nod. The door opens. The dark passage beckons. The procession files in. No sooner have you passed through the door than you hear a clatter behind you. The doctoress has made a show of dropping her bag in the dark and searching for it. The chaperones are distracted. Taking the presumptuous heiress's hand, you pull her to the hidden door. You fumble at the catch. There is a trick to it, it seems. Hurry! Your charge hisses. The catch turns. The door opens. You step through. You wait with a presumptuous heiress in the passage behind the door of night. Her breathing is shallow and tense. You hear the procession move on, and then there is a tap at the hidden door. The doctoress, who sees uncannily well in the dark, is there. You admit her. Right, she says professionally, scrutinising your companion's features. Time to do my bit. What exactly is your bit? The presumptuous heiress asks. Okay, complete your escape with the presumptuous heiress. Her once luckless sister may even now be making her own escape with the fungulicious forewoman. But perhaps that's not something the doctoress needs to know.
Ah, I thought it froze. It hadn't. I needed to just scroll. <laughs> the doctoress removes an ungoint from her bag and begins rubbing it into the heiress's temples, along her hairline, behind the ears, and under the jaw. If you disappear, they will look for you, the doctoress explains, indicating that the other woman is to lie on the floor. Therefore, I will be your replacement. Ideally, I'd give you that stuff another minute to work, but I need to rejoin the procession before I'm... your... missed. Be still and be quiet. Sitting astride the heiress, she pushes her sharp fingernail into the skin of the girl's temple and slides it like a scalpel around her face. A sound like tearing paper. Oh god, I can't feel it. Why can't I feel it? The heiress gasps. The doctress shushes her. When the incision is complete, the doctress reaches up and with a tug, slides off her own face. Behind is a solid knot of muscle palpitating and inhuman. Like a magician whipping a tablecloth from beneath a set of crockery, she swaps her face and the heiresses. A few pinches and tucks the application of ointment from another jar and the process is complete. Done, says the doctoress, as the presumptuous heiress feels the unfamiliar shapes of her new face. You turn your back as they quickly trade clothes. Good God. How terrifying. Uh, let's ask the doctoress what she is. You are uncertain she is not, and has never been human. In old London, your kind called mine snuffers. We were not friends. Few of us made the journey to heaven, or perhaps many of us did. Who knows how many of us hide behind faces you thought were familiar? He grins and is surprised by the shape and feel of her new smile. Then it is time to part. She returns to the procession, and you lead the heiress on. The governess's hidden tunnels wind behind the grand chambers and beneath the hour looms. You pass cells and shelves of records. Sometimes you hear voices and hide until they pass. Eventually, you find your way to an exterior gantry from where you can see your engine in the sidings of the parlor. Using a stolen lamp, you flash a signal until your crew comes to collect you. Wonderful, what a daring escape. Do you sell fuel? Uh, no. No, they don't. Nope, oh dear. We might be in trouble. <laughs> I just realized we have one fuel and two supplies. And I'd like to get back to the most serene mausoleum. I guess we could stop off at Warbly Jexton Mare. Let's hope we don't get eaten by guests. Hmm. It's kind of just where we're at right now. Uh, what was the bargain? Ministry approved literature. That's quite cheap. I'll buy that. Let's go. And hope that we don't die. Because that would really suck after basically two episodes of just almost all reading. Oh, get out of the way, monitor. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, no, monitor, don't do it. Every damn time I try to get near one of these things, it shoots me. Uh, do we need crew? We do kind of need crew. Let's search for survivors. Ooh, we can lose terror, or we can gain at the cost of terror. Ah! Explore corridors whose walls and ceilings are daubed with unfamiliar constellations. At last, you find a cabin barricaded from within. It holds a crewman who seems lucid. He begs to join your crew. Your own crew? Aren't sure. What if the star madness seizes him? You know what? No, it's alright. We'll lose terror. We're going 50 sovereigns. He looks disappointed, but agrees. The crew are happier with him locked away and are cheered by being able to perform this act of sensibly cautious charity. Let's get the hell out of Skyhenge. I know how nasty that place is. I've been there before. Even though that is actually a quicker way of getting back. Hmm. That is a much quicker way of getting back. 
No, do you know? Uh, well, I'll play it safe. I'll play it safe. I'm going to go to Warbly Juxta Man. Which I say wrong every time. It's got to the point where I say things wrong so much that it's just ingrained in my brain. you got to think, I've played like hundreds and hundreds of hours of this game and I'm still... I've played hundreds of hours? I've played a lot of hours. Probably about a hundred hours now. If not more. I'm still terrible. How do I manage that? Eventually I'll... Uh... Oh, that's a fluke. Uh oh, the basic maneuvers. Ow! Ow! God damn it! I'm pressing all of the wrong uh, dodging buttons. Run, 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 run. Nope. <laughs> Big fluke. Big fluke. Big fluke. <laughs> run, run, run. Okay, our terror's okay. In fact, the only thing we have to worry about is our ship is about to blow up and we have no f food and fuel. You know, two kind of important things that we need to kind of work through a little bit, otherwise we might be in trouble. Another fluke, really? Go away. I'm not falling for the Dreadnought again. This area, nasty. Everything wants to kill me. Oh, we're almost there. Not so bad. Do I have any news? Oh, I had to isolate again. That's my news. My uh, my parents that I live with, my mum got sick. Another one, really? Uh, my mother got sick. She has a cough. And um, it's quite scary, to be honest. I don't really I don't really know what to do with myself. It's all a bit weird. Uh, so I'm quite stressed out, really, all things considered. I'm probably just going to, like, you know... I was, like, tempted to do more videos and things, but I think I'm just going to stay as normal. Try to keep things going. It's a good distraction, to be honest, playing games like this. One of the biggest things I'll give games like this. They're very good at escapism. Cage catch? Don't really need cage catches, even though I say that every time, and I always need them. Uh, let's just do four and four. That's more than enough to give me a tool. Is it? Yeah, you know what? Let's let's push the boat out a little bit here. Six and six. I'm going to stop off at London to fix my ship anyway. It should be relatively safe. This way, I hope. Yeah, how is everyone else holding up? I mean, this whole coronavirus thing has been going for weeks now. It's like, it's every single episode now for the past, like, three, I think. I've talked about it. And I'm kind of hoping everyone's okay. It's, it's all a bit stressful, especially if you're one of the poor bastards who can't work from home, like myself, where you, you're still having to go to work and stuff, and you, you feel like you're breaking the damn law. It was like I was, um, I was going to work. It's just no... There's no cars on the road. And like, you see a policeman and you're like, is he going to pull me over for like, not for being at work? <laughs> for trying to get to work? It's all very scary. Very strange. But you know, I'm sure it will come back to normal eventually. Apparently, according to the news today, uh, Europe is, lift is coming close to lifting the lockdown. Seems like a really bad idea if you ask me, but eh, I'm not a politician. I'm just a guy who speaks like an idiot on the internet. Personally, I think it's silly that uh, a lot of businesses are just operating like nothing's changed. Uh, they're, they're like, oh, if as long as everyone stays two meters apart from each other, it'll all be fine. But, eh. What can I say? I suppose people still need money because they need to pay their mortgages and loans and all the other things. Food, I suppose. Pretty important one. But it's quite a tough decision, isn't it? You can't just close down your business because then you can't pay your staff. Even though there is furloughing, which is like where you lay off your staff temporarily and they get 80% of their wages. But then the business might lose business, if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm very selfish. All I'm thinking of right now is me and my uh, my immediate family. Um, I'm hoping, because uh, I isolated myself with a bit of a cough. Not last week, week before. And now my mum has a bit of a cough. Probably the same thing, and I'm okay. A little bit weird. I mean, hay fever's kicking my ass, but other than that, yeah, I feel okay. And I'm hoping the same thing's going for her. And it'll all just have blown over in like a, a couple of days, and we won't have to worry about it. And I just, you know, go back to work or whatever. But on the off chance that it is something serious, it's uh, quite worrying. All right, here we are. We made it to London. Let's repair ourselves. How much time do we have? We have five minutes. Ah, is that enough time for me to get to the Serene Mausoleum and hand in the quest? What do we think? What do we think? I think so. 
I think so. I'll do it. Okay. I mean, this video is definitely going up late. I, I just looked at the clock then. Because of all this rubbish about, like, I had to call work and all this sort of stuff to tell them what's going on. I started recording this considerably later than normal. And it's coming out the same day. Yeah, because planning. Uh, we need to repair our ship. Not that one. I'm actually completely lost right now. Stories. Beam of Sapphire Yards. Repair your locomotive. There we go. Probably repair your hull. Perfect. Okay, well, what, what uh, do we have anything to go to the... Any... Uh, crockery for the macabre counsellor? I mean, we're going there anyway. He wants, wants three sets. Well, we already have one, so... Wicked. Hey, to the Serene Mausoleum. We have more than the fuel and stuff. Just down here. We should be okay. We're going to have to go through that damn graveyard again. I swear I spend so much time in the damn graveyard when I'm in Albion. It's unreal. Hopefully we don't get attacked by the uh, those black ships with the rocket launchers on them, because they hurt. Oh, I guess I just heard the front door. Ah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, oh, Whitney Vinegar Lumber Company. Let's not crash into the side of their building. That would suck quite badly. There we go. Perfect. We're on our way. We made it out of there. I really wish there was just like a straight line straight out of London, but I guess it's to that's to slow you down when you're coming down south. All part of the game design. It's magnificently designed maps. I remember when this whole game was just open circles. Eleutheria changed all of that, didn't it? When they introduced all those winding passages and things. Certain directions meant you could go to certain places quicker, but you'd trade terror and stuff. I always, like, completely choose the not-terror route. <laughs> it's not like some of the seas where... Uh... Oh, great. There's one of those guys I was talking about. Uh, some of the seas, I just run out of fuel all the time. I really need to, like, get good at some of the seas. It plays completely different to Sun Sky. Sun Sky is so much more laid back. That could just be that I've played so much more of it. And I know exactly how much fuel I need to kind of get around places and the sort of speeds of my ship and stuff. Whereas in Sun of Seas, I'm just getting my ass handed to me by absolutely everything constantly. Who's that? Oh, that's a Dreadnought. Dreadnought and a Monitor. Let's not fly in front of the Monitor because every time they shoot me... I would go and loot that, but no, I'm okay. Let's dock in here. Give hand over the uh, the crockery. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? One, two, three. Not very much money. But it does give us another invitation to Pertinence if we ever want to go back there. <laughs> uh, the nave, there should be like a, attending a funeral. Let's attend a deathless funeral. We pay to get in, but we gain favour. The name is on the lips of the deathless few. Right, where is... The lady... one of the deathless she is is it the macabre counselor you have unfinished business with her well she demands do you have my daughter yep with the assistance of the clairvoyant doctoress's face you have succeeded the macabre counselor is as close to overjoyed as you have ever seen her which is to say her mouth twitches sadly the presumptuous heiress response is much more passionate. She drops the hood with a dramatic flair. You let a bloody monster steal my face! Just a bit of skin, dear, the macabre counsellor says soothingly. Perhaps it'll grow back. If not, you should, have you should be used to masks by now. Brutal and brilliant. Before the presumptuous heiress can continue her tirade, the macabre counsellor draws you aside. Most satisfactory. You'll have everything I promised and more. Now, 
If you'll excuse me, my daughter and I have important matters to discuss. So we got one crimson promise. Pray tell is a crimson promise. I've never seen that item before. If anyone has any insight to what I can use that for or what it is for, please let me know. That would be incredibly useful. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to Google it. And that's not even remotely as fun. Uh, okay. Uh, three cask of Navarine gemstones. Absolutely brilliant. A thousand experience. And the quest has gone. And I guess that means I'm going to end the episode here. I didn't mean to press that. Uh, let's just undock and dock again, make sure it's safe. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.